Hello viewers. Today, let's make Omija Makali. This is a special treasured ingredient in Korean cuisine. These are dried Omija berries, five flavor berries, Uweitsu uh, in Chinese, uh, Shisandra chinensis, also called Magnolia berry. And I bought these at H Mart, but I'm sure you can find them at other Asian supermarkets. So to start off with, I want to investigate Omija tea. This is the first time I've bought Omija, so I want to experiment with cold steeping and hot steeping. So the cold tea versus the hot tea. So for the cold tea, I'm going to use six grams of dried Omija berries, 400 milliliters of cold water, and I'm gonna leave that refrigerated for 12 hours. And to start off with, I'm just gonna rinse off those berries quickly and put them in the measuring cup here and pour in 400 milliliters of water and put that in the fridge for 12 hours. And after that time, this is what it looks like. Water is colored slightly and uh, I'm going to strain that, pour that out strain that and uh, now make the hot steeping same amount of dried omija berries same amount of water this time it's hot water 90 degrees celsius and i'm going to steep that for 30 minutes so again i'm going to strain the uh the hot tea and let's compare the flavors so what they have in common they both have tart aroma and the omija berries have a curd and cranberry flavored combined. It's a complex flavor. It has, it's astringent, it's sour, it's salty, sweet, and bitter. That's the reason for the five flavor name. Now, steeping it cold, from what I read, is the recommended way to prepare the tea. It is a light pink color, and the astringent part, I think, is dominant. For the spicy part, it's, that's the part that's dominant. When I, when I used hot water, it had a darker color and the sour flavor was more dominant. So let's do that right now. Let's brew Omija Yangju, a two-stage makgeolli. On day zero, well, we're gonna make bombok. That's the first stage with 200 grams of rice flour. I'm gonna make a porridge from this with 600 milliliters of boiling water, boil a bit extra water. So, and uh, as I'm adding it, to the to the bowl here it's on a scale so i can tell exactly when i've when i've added 600 milliliters so add and stir add and stir and that's your bombok porridge and that needs to cool that needs, so cover that and set it aside to cool and while we're waiting for that, I'll get my uh, new rook ready. This is the new rook from H Mart that I, that I got. Uh, I'm going to use 100 grams of new rook and 100 milliliters of water just to hydrate it, get it ready. And uh, I'm waiting for the bombok to cool below 30 degrees Celsius. And when that's happened, I can add the new rook and uh, mix that in. I want to get the bombok a bit softer. And uh, I decided to add some wine yeast too. So I'm gonna use some white wine yeast, half a teaspoon, mix that with 50 milliliters of water. And uh, I'm gonna add that to this as well. Debating whether or not to do this, but I decided uh, I, I, for consistency, I want the wine yeast. Okay, so try to mix that for, for five minutes get it a bit softer. What you really want is, is for it to be pourable, but it's for whatever reason today, it is not pourable. I'm gonna to have to carefully put it in the jar. Uh, this is a relatively dry recipe. I'm not using my normal Eonju recipe today. This is drier than normal. I'm using less water than the amount of rice. Normal recipe of mine would be to use the same amount of water as rice. What I'm hoping to accomplish here is that the brew turns out a bit sweeter. 
I think that would be more suitable for the homey strawberry flavor, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so get that uh, Bombok and Nuruk mixture into the jar. That's the first stage of my Eon Chu. And keep the lid loose. And we're gonna put that in the cupboard and ferment it. It's around 20 degrees Celsius. And then the next day, I see some some bubbles formed in it. It's all it's puffy. I'm gonna stir this twice a day for the first uh, three days. It's not really bubbling on top yet. But then on day two, uh, look at the top. It lots of bubbles. Okay, so it's fermenting away perfectly fine. This is good. Nothing to worry about here. Smells good. And on day three. It's uh, it's settled down quite a bit, so I be better add the next stage. It's ready for the next stage now. The next stage is going to be gotubab, hard steamed rice made with sweet rice, chopped saw. What you're seeing here is more than one kilogram of rice. I'm going to use one kilogram of this for the omija brew today. The rest is used for some other projects. And of course, I have to wash the rice. Wash the rice gently so you don't uh, break apart the rice grains. As you keep washing and rinsing it, you'll find that the uh, as you rinse it, the water will become more and more clear. So like I said before, this is a less wet recipe. I shouldn't have said drier. Uh, it's, uh, it's a recipe with less water than rice. So I'm hoping that the end result is sweeter and it'll match the flavor of the omija better because the omija is a bit sour. The sweetness is quite light. It'd be nice if the brew had some sweetness to complement that. And the water's looking clear enough. I'm gonna soak this for three hours. And uh, after the three hours, I pour it into the colander here and, uh, and rinse it off again. Get every bit of rice and, and rinse off. And uh, when we steam it, we don't want there to be any drops of water on the rice, of course. So let this, uh, let this, uh, after you rinse it, let it drain in the sink here for, for half an hour. You don't want any, any visible water on the rice. Let that drain for 30 minutes and uh, get the steamer ready. Uh, it's almost boiling and producing steam. Put the damp cloth on the steamer. This is a sturdy cheesecloth, sturdy enough to hold all this rice. Spread it out evenly and uh, poke some holes in to let the steam through. Fold up the cloth. Once it starts uh, steaming again, uh, let it steam for 40 minutes. And as we're waiting for that, let's use the omija berries. I haven't used the omija berries yet. Let's use them. I'm going to use 40 grams of dried omija and I'm going to use uh, hot water, 100 milliliters of hot water is at 90 degrees. And I'm going to let that steep until I use them later. And I'll be, I'll be steeping for more than an hour. Now the uh, the gotubab is ready now. The rice is steamed for 40 minutes. This is gotubab. Put the gotubab on the uh, on the cooling racks here and uh, I'm gonna spread this out to cool. That'll take about an hour. You need to cool to below 30 degrees Celsius. And this is the gotubab from uh, one kilogram of the chop saw originally. And here's the, uh, the omija steeped in hot water. I'm gonna add 40 grams of additional omija now. So this will just be steeping in the room temperature of the brew. So I have both hot steeping and cold steeping omija berries. And I'm just trying to cover all my bases here and get as much flavor out of the omija as possible. So that's why I'm using both of these methods Add the gotubab into the first stage, mix it by hand. 
That looks good. Clean off the edges. Keep the lid loose and back in the cabinet. It's gonna ferment for a while now. So here's a summary of the recipe I'm following for this brew. The first stage is Bombach. I used 200 grams of rice flour, 100 grams of Nuruk, half a teaspoon of yeast, and 750 milliliters of water in total. And then the second stage was Godubop, uh, one kilogram of chopped sal, sweet rice, 80 grams of omija in total, and 100 milliliters of water. So overall, there's 850 milliliters of water for 1.2 kilograms of rice. Because of that ratio, less water than rice, I'm expecting it to turn out a bit sweeter. It might also have a harder time fermenting. It might take longer. Um, so we'll see what happens. Okay, next day, day four, and it looks a bit dry on top. I'm just going to stir it once today. And the next day, day five, see that the uh, liquid is collecting at the bottom. It doesn't look quite as dry now. I'm not going to stir it today. Day six, yeah, there's more liquid on the bottom. Day seven, plenty of bubbles mixed in with the rice there. It's fermenting away. I can I can hear it. And on day eight, I want to make sure the uh, omija is mixed in uniformly with the rice. I'm going to stir it one more time. It has softened up a lot. It's not fermenting as fast as normal though. And that liquid layer at the bottom is smaller than I expect normally. And that liquid layer in the bottom is uh, growing as the days go on. And it's still fermenting. There's a, you can see all the bubbles in the rice. And hopefully this is extracting as much flavor as possible from the berries. If you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe. Click the bell to be notified of my new video published every Thursday. And please share this video wherever it is appropriate. I thank you for your help in spreading the word about rustic Asian rice wine. It's been 17 days and you can see that the some rice is falling to the bottom. So as more and more rice falls to the bottom, that layer of liquid is uh, rising a bit. Now almost in the middle of the jar. So, and it smells great. Fermentation is, is proceeding, but uh, I wonder how long I should do this for. Well, it is a lot quieter now, and it has got, I'm going to bottle on day 25. This is just an Eon Jew. I don't think I need to wait too much longer than 25 days. So let's take a look at it and look at the texture now. So it's pretty soft. But uh, it, again, since I used less water overall, it's not as liquid as my other Eonju brews. So let's see what it's like to filter this. So I boil my filter bag and pour the whole, whole jar into the filter bag. This is a nylon filter bag. So not too hard to get out of the jar. Oh, but this feels pretty heavy. Like it doesn't want to go through the filter bag that easily. So this took some effort to squeeze. It's not the worst, but it's definitely not the best either. So this is going to be quite a thick brew. There's 500 grams of chigami. So that's, that's quite a bit. And this, uh, yeah, and this seems a bit thick, a bit thick. It was harder to squeeze through and it's, it seems a bit thick and I get, uh, I'm going to make sure I, I get more flavor out of this. I'm going to get you get a bonus bowl of uh, Mockley out of this. I'm going to add 200 milliliters of water to the Jigami and uh, squeeze it again. 
really pushed around in the water. But there's more flavor to, and alcohol to be extracted here. So squeeze it out again, and I get a complete extra bowl of makgeolli. And this is what the brewer gets to drink on the bottling day. So the the weight of the jigami went down from 508 grams to 437 grams. So that, uh, that weight that was lost, that's the extra flavor that I got in my bonus bowl. All right, so I got two bottles. I got less than uh, two liters of uh, wanju out of this. I got the bonus bowl and there's the jigami. And the jigami is very fragrant with the omija, quite notable. I'm going to drink that bonus bowl and it has a great aroma on oh, the flavor. Pretty special too, but yeah, very nice flavor. Okay, so, but I'm going to do the tasting of the, of the wanju in three days. Here we go. So it's been three days and it's time to taste it. And, uh, but first of all, we're gonna look at how much it has settled. So the Changju layer is up here and the Tachu layer is down here. It hasn't settled that much. Um, there's, it still seems to be, the sediment layer is still quite large. And um, I sort of predicted that after, uh, after it was difficult while, uh, while, while straining it, while filtering it through the, um, through the filter bag, um, it was hard to squeeze it out. So, um, so I did predict that this was going to be um, uh, extra cloudy and wouldn't settle that well. So, um, and this was a, a bit of a different recipe, not just the additional omija, it's also uh, quite a dry recipe. I was hoping it would be a bit sweeter. We'll see if that's the case or not. And the other interesting thing is that when I made tea, the tea was pinkish or um, or reddish or brownish, but the, uh, the result here is definitely orange. This is orange. Okay, and the the aroma is is perfect. It's the omija aroma. It's um, the the peppery spiciness, the astringent part that's very characteristic of omija berry. That's that is very noticeable. Okay, so I definitely have the aroma, and uh, the changju is a bit cloudy here. It, and it does smell fruity as well. Okay, the flavor, um, yeah, I, I, I taste grapefruit at the beginning. The grapefruit flavor is not as sour as grapefruit, but there is sourness. And it, it tastes, uh, also at the beginning, it tastes sweetness and sourness. And then later, more rounded, maybe um, sort of the oxidized flavor of, of, of wine. And so that's more uh, nutty or buttery. Okay, so yeah, this is packed with flavor. So I had the whole bag of omija and I wanted to use enough so that I was sure to have, um, you know, the distinctive flavor. And th that was definitely enough. That amount of omija. Yeah, this is this packs a punch of flavor. And it, it looks less orange here for some reason. This is more pink. Okay, that, that is tasty. 
the Changju itself is tasty. Now I'm going to taste the Wanju, the Changju and Takju mixed together. It looks pretty thick here. Yeah, it is thick. That seems to extend out the flavor. So I taste the taste that grapefruit. Grapefruit flavor for longer. So again, very flavorful and uh, has yeah, the aftertaste is omija too. So the omija flavor carries all the way through, although it's especially grapefruit flavored. The aroma is so strong too. Here's the makgeolli, uh, the diluted wanju, diluted about one to one with water. Still has great aroma. Okay, and the texture, I think the texture is better. The, the takchu itself is pretty thick. Yeah, this has a very smooth texture, pretty unnoticeable. Still the same flavors. Yeah, good. Yeah, omija is, is such a complex flavor, but it, it, this carries through the whole the whole uh, tasting experience from beginning to end. Yeah, so so uh, this was enough omija to use to flavor this batch. Um, it worked, and if you want a more subtle flavor. Uh, I would advise you to use a lot less omija. I was a little worried that the, when I had the tea, it was uh, seemed a little weak with the amount I was using. So I wanted to really uh, use enough for the makgeolli and, and this was enough, but you could get away with using maybe half or a quarter of what I used and you'd still have flavor. Um, so something for you to try. I know there's a lot of uh, other ways you could brew with this. My technique is not the only way, but I, I wanted to extract a, a lot of flavor and get as much out of the of the omija as possible. That's why I did it both as with hot water and also just soaking the, the dried berries uh, during the brewing process. So by using both of those methods at the same time, I wanted more well-rounded flavor and to extract as much as possible from the omija. So it's, it is a special product. I want to make the best use of it. So I hope you're brewing some makgeolli of your own. I hope you're able to drink some makgeolli and uh, I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching.